Tell Danny to move. Tell Danny. 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 Okay, so here's a couple announcements. Um, first one is um, we are going to call another fast. Um, so Pastor um, has asked that I announce it. It's going to be for June the first through the seventh. So one week, just like we did before Daniel fast, I will repost um, <laughs> kind of what you are allowed to eat. And um, and if the Lord asks you to go further and and He wants you to get something else up, then that's just something. Good and all the way to him. Amen. So um, he knows what he knows what you guys need. So Amen. just ask him. Amen. Um, and so during that fast, we're gonna uh, just kind of be praying about this. This building um, has been sold, um, so we need a home. <laughs> we are first on it, but you know, we will need to find somewhere. So we're gonna have to pray uh, hard about where we are. Pray real hard. And this is also the reopening. The world is reopening. So. Um, <laughs> During that time, pray for your families, pray for your friends, pray for yourself, uh, protection, and just pray for the city. Um, I mean, yeah. obviously something's working here. Yeah. This, this city hasn't been hit that bad, so yeah. we have a lot of church well, here. Yeah. So, well, I don't yeah. know, but, you know, something, something's going on. It's just going good here, so Amen. keep going. Um, next, I just wanted to um, let you guys know this is... Um, the end of this month on the 24th will be uh, our fellow fell farewell service for Alex. Mm. Um, he's going to preach that night. And then in the foyer, we're going to have cake, and we're going to celebrate him and his next journey um, over in New York. And so we're excited for him. <laughs> no, Woo! it's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we're going to do, I'm going to just really quick go through the names of the birthdays of May. So Christian just had a birthday. Uh, Miss and I had a birthday. They just passed. Nina and Ray both have birthdays this month. Um, I'm not celebrating my birthday, but it's this month. <laughs> I'm going to bring it up to me. <laughs> but, uh, and then um, our new member, Sarah, who was just baptized, it's her birthday this month as well. And then Arsis. Amen. I always want to remind you guys about service. Uh, for Bible study at 6.30, it's going to still be at the house, at mm -hmm. uh, Pastor's house. So if you guys are interested, um, get with us about the address. You better come. And it's going to be home. Amen. All right. So last thing I'm going to go over is our tithes and offerings. And I'm just going to give you guys um, an idea of what's uh, – usually I like to use myself. And usually it's a good thing. Like I have almost gotten every single thing. I'm just waiting for my inheritance to come in. Well, <laughs> no, this list, uh, no, be, no uh, time soon. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to be more, like, open about things. So um, the enemy really, he, he hits us sometimes when we're already low. He loves to just add more storms. So I had announced to my job that I was going to work part-time because I really wanted to spend more time with the family. I wanted to just, I really wanted to focus here. And and uh, then I found out that our mortgage had gone up $500 a month at the same time that I announced that I was going to go part-time. Wow. Um, and so my heart, obviously, I was holding on to this thing that I really wanted more time, and and then it happened, and I was devastated. And so um, I just want you guys to know that I'm going to be the same whether it's not a storm or whether I'm in, like, plentiful. Yeah. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to worship Him in my tithes and offering. Yeah. And I'm going to announce sometime soon that this has been restored, and I'm just, I can't wait to tell you guys how good this is because, because me and Joseph, we're, we're never going to not talk to the Lord. Like, with all our hearts, I'm going to say that over and over, and we're going to continue to. to push through. And, and I was sitting here pray, worshiping, and I'm like, you know what? We're just going to offer more. <laughs> because the enemy has no power here, and he thinks that's what's going to bring us down, but that's not what's going to bring us down. That should bring me closer. Hallelujah! So, Hallelujah! Um, so I'm, I'm not even worried. It's whatever, it's, it's all in God's hands. Amen. So, <laughs> you still have to be wise. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, okay, so my so the verse basically is, you know, Proverbs 3 5. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So I see something that might look like laugh, but I know it's not going to be. It's for my good, it's for Joseph's good, and something better is going to come. I just don't know what it is yet. Amen. But I hope that, I hope that strong. you know, pushes you guys forward to, to just trust in Him more. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. All right, so let's put our hands on our hearts and really say it like we mean it and walk with the Lord. Okay. As we receive today's offering, as we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, raises and bonuses, benefits, benefits, health and strength, health and strength, houses and better housing, houses and better housing, sales and commissions, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, estates and inheritances, interest and income, interest and income. Rebates and returns. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Bills paid off. Bills decreased. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs. That I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to Yes. Okay, so the reason I'm really going on about this inheritance thing is because one of my friends, she's, her family is in Lebanon, and they love the Lord. And they gave her oil to be faithful tithers, and um, they gave her a lot of money to give to the family. But um, they found out that their family was owed $53 million. Oh. No one died for this money. No one has to die. Hallelujah. There was some company and there was some issue that was, that was what happened. And the family, the, it split between five, four siblings, so it's $53 million. And they had no idea, like, at all this money was coming. There, there was this company sold years ago by their great-grandpa. And so now my friend, she's not the daughter. She's the, the great-granddaughter or whatever. So she gets obviously part of this. So she, like... Out of nowhere, they had no idea. They were just like, yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm truly like, I, I'm like, I don't know where it's coming from. Maybe like your great grandpa sold some kind of gold mining company. Hallelujah. I don't know where it's coming from. I'm so happy for her. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, of course, well. <laughs>
Uh, welcome to Jacoby Ministries Hallelujah House. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us, those who are online. We'd like to invite you to come and be with us live here to worship with us. This is a family connected. We are believers, trusting in God, like Kayla said, with all our hearts. We believe in God that the word will change you, the word of God will change you, rearrange you, motivate you, and you will be determined to finish this race. Amen? How many believe that there's an expected end? Hey, listen, one day all of this will be over. The fight is worth it. Trust me, it is. I mean, we talk about time all the time. We talk about time. But realize this. The Bible says one day with the Lord is as a thousand. And a thousand years is one day. The Bible compares our life on earth to a flash. So understand that eventually this is over. I am looking forward to going home. But by the time I go home, I want to bring as many people as possible with me. Amen? You are called to be a light. Share your faith. Be determined to persuade people with the word of God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for being always with us. Thank you, Father, that we know and understand that you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. Help me to preach and teach, Lord God. I cannot do it without you. I won't even try without you, Lord God. I know that you have called me to a message, a message you're giving me, a message for your people. It is for all of us, even as I speak it, I am receiving it. May those who hear, receive. Those who hear, apply. Those who hear, keep your promises and your word in their hearts and in their minds. And may they meditate on it day and night. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, before we start, amen. I can tell you all this. This is not my own for those who know me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pastor has a flippy. Okay? Pastor has a flippy. That's what my brother calls it. He says, man, flippy takes pictures. It sure does. <laughs> Listen, last week I preached a message last week, and it was called Almost Persuaded. Okay? Or something like that. But almost is not enough. Amen. All right? So you're like, that is what that was called. God, almost is not enough. The message that God has given me is also a continuation of almost is not enough. This Sunday is going to be a part two, because the title of that is The Enemy Within. Okay? Next Sunday will be the part three, and then Alex will take on, and it's going to be hard to say see you later to Alex. We're not saying goodbye, but see you later. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Acts. Chapter 26, and we're only going to read verse number 3, Acts chapter 26, and verse number 3. And as you're turning there, I'd like to share something else with you. As God had woke me up the other day, and he will do that, as he woke me up, he also reminded us to stay in the course. To stand the course. You're moving, what does that mean? To stand the course. If sometimes you know, we want, we, we are praying for a word from God. Amen? We're asking for a word from God. I need to hear from God. And I love, I heard another man of God says, but those who are going in the right direction, if God hasn't said nothing to you, stand the course. Keep going in the direction that you are going. I said in the right direction. And if God wants you to go into a different direction, guess what? God will order your steps to go in a different direction. But if you are pressing forward, keep pressing forward. Trust me, God hears you when you pray. We are getting ready to have a breakthrough. We are getting ready for a breakthrough. And to understand, if we would just remain faithful, and we will remain focused on giving God the glory, praising God, worshiping God. We will enter into what God has promised. Because in Philippians 1.6, and I was reminding Alex, God reminded me, he that has begun a good work in you will finish it. God did not bring y'all out of all the stuff that you have run out of to watch you fall. 
He's going to finish. Keep the faith. All right, Acts chapter 26. Alex is reading for me today. He's going to be reading a lot. A lot. Uh, Acts chapter 26, starting at verse, and just read verse number three for me, Alex. Acts 26, verse 3. No, sorry, I can't do that. I just can't do it. Okay, verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. Verse 2. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before you touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Verse 3. Especially because I know you to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Therefore, I speak, I beseech you to hear me patiently. Did you hear that? He said he knew that Agrippa had what? He was an expert in all customs. He knew Agrippa understood the word. Now, go over, because this is just kind of follow through as I go through my lesson. Look at verse number, Acts 26, and read verse number 8. Verse Acts 26, 26, verse number 28. I'm sorry. Acts 26, verse number 28. 28. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. You almost. <laughs> you almost got me. You almost shared enough. Well, I stopped chasing y'all and started believing y'all. Almost is not good enough. Mm -mm. What happens if Agrippa chose not to get saved? Can you imagine if the Lord said, well, your name was almost written mm. in the Lamb's Book of Life, but it wasn't. Almost is not good enough. And Agrippa said, well, what's that mean? Almost is not good enough. An almost commitment is not a commitment. You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. That's, a, that's, that's deep. After everything Paul shared, everything he, you know, about how Jesus was crucified and how Jesus appeared to him on the road to kill some Christians and put them in jail. How the light shined and knocked him off his horse. And he heard a voice speak to him. And the other men around him heard the voice. He's sharing all of this. The gripper is quite aware of what had happened in Jerusalem. Paul is testifying about what has happened to him, what he had seen. And at the end of his testimony, the gripper says, almost persuaded. Listen, your belief in God without a changed life, the Bible says in James 2.19, a lot of people tell me they believe in God. Yeah. I believe in God. I don't serve him, but I believe. I believe in the high power. The Bible says that the devil believes in God. James 2.19 says the demons believe in God and tremble. A belief without change is not good enough. A belief without sacrifice recognizing what Christ has did on the cross for you. Without saying, Lord, I need you. How many of us, oh, how many of us have tried things that did not work? I've tried a lot of stuff that did not work. I've tried some stuff that would make you sick for weeks. Did not work. Did not take the pain away. It gave me a temporary pleasure, a temporary high, but when I came down, my problems were still there. We have tried alcohol, we have tried drugs, we have tried relationships, and they almost 
He works. People that come into your life that share. People that preach the word of God in the gyms to young kids and, and at work while they're working on airplanes and work in the office. Whatever you share, recognize that word that you have sent forth doesn't almost work. The Bible says the word of God is powerful. And as a matter of fact, it says it does not return to him void. Then what I mean by that, the person that you have shared the word of God with them has no more excuses for what they have denied. But the word of God, Bible says, does not return to void. So the person that refuses it, when they stand before God, they can't say, Lord, no one ever shared with me the gospel. And then God shows them a day of work where somebody was sitting down and you went up and told them, you know that God loves you? And that God wants to bring you into a place of joy and happiness. You know the sorrow that you have. God wants to replace your sorrow with joy. But they have a decision. Mm -hmm. They can decide whether to hear and remove themselves from the light. The Bible says light came, in, light came into the world. But men love darkness rather than light. We who are believers, it didn't almost work for us. It did what? It worked. It worked. It worked. I'm telling you, it works. If you're looking for something that never fails, the word of God works. Jesus works. Jesus lives. Don't be one that is looking at this today and saying, you know what, preacher? I listen to you talk about the love of God. And you almost persuade me. Almost is not good enough. All right, we need to know the scripture. Amen. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 6. This is going to be a little reading. Because who is our greatest example? Jesus. Who is our greatest example? Jesus. Listen, the Lord came in preaching the word of God. He fulfilled the Psalms and the Proverbs, right? Many people could have said the same thing that Gripper said. You almost persuaded me, Jesus, to believe that you are the Messiah. And those who were not persuaded crucified him. I'm going to take you through a journey that God has set your feet in a path to preach righteousness. God has set you in a path to preach deliverance. You all are ministers. This church was prophesied about that those who come out of this church would be ministers and preachers and evangelists and teachers. But I want to tell you, preachers and teachers and ministers, you got to get your life right first to be an effective witness. That means that not even some people who are going to listen to you. Some people are going to share their deepest hurts with you. And you're going to be that one to pray the word of God is them to bring them joy. But then you've got to tuck in your skin. Because there are going to be people that are going to hear the word, and there are going to be people that try to bite your hand off. Because they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. If they did it to our Lord, they will do it to you. But he didn't stop preaching. Mm -mm. He didn't stop caring. He didn't stop trying to persuade. Because he understood time. He understood. God, do y'all not realize if we don't share what's inside of us, the eternity for those who reject God, who, are, who will say at that day that living is almost persuaded me. I should have listened. Hell is full of memories. Luke 16, what did the rich man say? What did uh, uh, Abraham say to the rich man? Son, remember. God loves you. And it should be us that are sharing the true gospel with those who are lost. And I pray that more people say on that day of judgment that I was persuaded. Yeah. Not almost. Look at John chapter 6. Because I promise I'll be long because this is going to be a chapter. You know, part one, part two. Later, John chapter 6. 
And starting at verse number 59, I'll let you know me. We're going to try to get to 71, but we're not going to get there with the block stop down. All right. John chapter 6, starting at verse number 59. 59. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Oh, underline that. As he did what? Taught. Taught. Okay. God said to the church, what? Teachers. Apostles. Prophets, evangelists, pastors, and what? Teachers. So what is Jesus doing? Teaching. Go on. 60. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said to them, Does this offend you? Woo! Ah! So Oh, am I the one getting excited? Does this offend you? Mm -hmm. What is a disciple? Somebody that was already in the church. A disciple is a follower of Christ. These people who should be receiving the word got what? Offended. Offended. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's why a prayer life changes your thought pattern. God will wake you up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. You're not even praying for you. You're praying for the people that you're a witness to. <coughs> Amen, Caleb. Amen. I believe God for well, just one day. Can I ask all the question? Okay. Say God bless this church for like $4 or $5 million. So the whole church knows God, right? And then God tells your pastor to sow it all. Every drop. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Has you lost your mind? There's a pastor carpenter who sold forty million dollars every dime that was in the church account to pay for somebody else's church. You know what God turned around and did? You can't not give God. You can't not give God. Amen. Amen. Okay, I don't know why I said that, y'all. I just wanted to just get it out there just in case it happens. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. I'll say first. 62. What? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. 63. It is the Spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. The Word of God is living and what? Powerful. Powerful. The Word of God is alive. When you read, okay, I know some of you are thinking, Pastor, why don't you compare the Word of God to a hollow of romance? This is the greatest love story ever told. Yeah. Put the hollow finger down. Put it down. Put it down. Put it, down. Put it away. Put it away. Put it in the trash. This is the greatest love story ever told. The Word of God is alive. That when you read it, it is God breathed. Okay, go on. 64. But there are some of you that do not believe. Oh, I know that word. These guys, listen to me, I'm not stopping you, but my point is, you got to understand, this message is being preached in the church, in the synagogue, to believers. He, Jesus just said, I know there are some of you in here right now who what? Do not believe. It is up to you how you apply what is being taught. And the enemy in John 10, 10 comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You as believers are strong in the word and the power of whose might. You cannot take this word from me. You cannot take this word from me. This is not a message that is preached on the curb. This ain't a message preached in the hood. I mean, in, 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 okay, in, the, in, the, in the hookah house. This is in the church. This is in the church. But those who are hearing it should believe it. You're in the church. And Jesus said, I know there are some of you in here right now who don't believe. Go on. But there are some of you that do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. 65. And he said, therefore, I say to you that no man can come to me except it were given to him of my father. Mm. 66. Oh, you know, I got to say something about that. 
You didn't choose God, he did what? Chose me. God revealed himself to you, amen? Yeah. Right. Did he reveal himself to you? Yeah. Did he reveal himself to you? Yeah. No one can come to him unless he does what? God is drawing you. He didn't draw you to just take up space. He saw you to your word, and that you may understand the word that is in you. Some of you right now are going to be ministering to hundreds of people. You have no idea the things that God has in front of you. But all you can see right now, whoops, sorry, well I'm back. <laughs> but all you can see right now is what's in front of you. You cannot see what's ahead of you. Okay, but God can. The enemy knew that Moses was going to be the deliverer of Egypt. What did he try to do? Kill him. Pharaoh, kill him. Kill all the babies that are born. Because he knew the promise. Jesus coming to deliver us from the slavery of sin. What did the devil try to do? Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Go on. 67. 
Then said Jesus to the twelve, Will you also go away? 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Mm. 69. And we believe and are sure that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 70. And we believe what? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Many went back. If I say many went back. Many went back. This is Jesus. Me, not you. Out of the 70, Caesar, out of 70, okay, only 12 remained, and one of them was a thief. Out of the 70, this is Jesus, because if you don't let the word of God have preeminence in your life, the things that you said you would never go back to may start being appealing to you. If you don't feel, Pastor Wilson had a strong word on the Bible study the other day. If you don't feel this body with God, and you leave some empty cracks up in here, some things that you didn't put on the altar, when you kept those, those secret things that you kept that nobody knows about, if you don't feel them with God, eventually they're going to bring a couple homeboys and homegirls with them that are seven times stronger than the things that you said you would never go back to. I ain't never going back to that man. He's a killer. <laughs> All of a sudden, uh, 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 Charles is looking good to you. <laughs> Deborah is looking good to you. Children is looking good to you. Understand something. If you don't feel it with God, the attitudes and demeanors of things that you love, will start to be appealing to you and you'll go back to them. Many went back. And they were hearing the word of God out of God's own mouth. Mm. Go on. 70. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? <laughs> you know what? Jesus didn't play with words. Mm, he sure did. He didn't play with words. Because one of my favorite scriptures is when the disciples were stripping and woke Jesus up and, and he was sleeping on a pillow, he asked them what was their faith. When they couldn't cast out the devil out of the, out of the boy, Jesus said, how long must I bear with you? <laughs> Straight up, he didn't play on words. How long, how, how long must I bear with you? Where is your faith? Faith comes where? By hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing, and hearing. It's not just on Sunday, amen? amen. If you only come and get some of this word on Sunday, you're going to starve. Right. And you'll go back. You can't just get the word on Sunday. There's a Monday after Sunday. <laughs> There's a Tuesday after Monday. Don't ask me to do that. Don't <laughs> Understand what I'm saying. If you choose not to get into the word, things that once did not bother you, they, uh, reverse that. It's like the shred. Reverse that. <laughs> things that used to bother you will not bother you because you are starving your spirit. Many went back. Many went back. 70 and 71, then we're going to skip. Just yes. 70 and 71 again. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. 71. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Amen. The other seventy went back. You should have left with the it should have been seventy-one. Right. Amen? Amen. You should have left. Amen? Amen. It should have been seventy-one, but he stuck around. He stuck around. That was the truth. Purpose. All right, go to Luke chapter 10. Go to Luke chapter 10. I'm going to show you another version of that. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> Are you ready? Amen. Are you there? Amen. Luke chapter 10, starting at verse number one, Alex, I will try to let you read a little bit more this time, considering I have 10 minutes. 
Verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. Mm. Verse 2. Therefore he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, to the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Verse 3. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Verse 4. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. 5. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. 6. And if the Son of Peace is there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again. Verse 7. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hand. Okay, I have to stop there. I stop there. It says, in, in, in the house, it says, in the house is what? Verse 7. seven. Uh, in the same house, even, eating and drinking. He said, don't go from house to house. Yeah. Right? right? In other words, I mean, this is what the Lord gave me the other day. As I was reading and saying this. God has given you guys a spiritual house. Amen? Amen. This is your house. Yeah. And this is the Lord's house. This is your house. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Brown and the uh, True Vision. Yeah. I, I'm so grateful for this church. I am. Yeah. I am so grateful. But y'all who belong here, there are people who jump from house to house. Mm. <laughs> they go from church to church. Mm. In other words, if you're getting fed, stop being a church hopper. Okay? <laughs> stop going from house to house. Find a place in the church that God, find a place in the church you're at and help build that house. Amen. Stop jumping from house to house. Okay? I want you to understand God's family. And then I want y'all to see the other verse. It says, stop going. He says, I'm sending you out as lambs amongst wolves. Yeah. A lamb against a wolf. Who do we? In the natural. Because lambs have no way to defend themselves. They're not carrying an M9 or a Glock, right? They're not trained in martial arts. They are defenseless. I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. What does that mean? That means God is protecting you. Caleb mm -hmm. quoted that scripture, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Even though it seems like you're outnumbered, even though it seems like you're defenseless because he said you out a lamb on fools, guess what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm preaching to the church. Don't fear when God sends you out, Tanya. He's with you. He's with you. Even if those people are growling and showing their face to intimidate, God is with you. Okay, come on. Verse 7, then, uh, go not from house to house. That's my verse. Yep. 8, and into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, mm. each, eat such things as they set before you. 9, and heal the sick that are in, therein, and say to them, the kingdom of God is come near to you. Mm -hmm. 10, but in whatsoever city you enter, and they do not receive you, go your ways out into the streets. Of the same, and say, eleven. Even the very dust of your city, which cleaves on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this: that the kingdom of God has come near to you. Amen. Think how powerful that scripture is. Yes. Wow. Because those who receive you, the names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Those who don't receive you, guess what? It's not. Yeah. Some are going to receive you. Some are not. Do you quit? Nope. Okay, go on. Verse number, where are we at? 12. Mm -hmm. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom, Sodom. City, for Sodom than for that city. 13. Woe unto you. There you go. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. Mm -hmm. For if the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, 
They had a great while ago with repenting, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Think about that. God is saying to those cities, for those who did not receive him, all right, for those cities who did not receive him, guess what? That's powerful, isn't it? They told me that's powerful. Those cities that don't receive you, Whoa. on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for those cities. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? God broke. Yeah. It will be more tolerable because a greater one was preached in your city than was preached in that city, and you didn't receive it. Mm. Okay, go on. Verse number 14. 14. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. 15. And you, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. Mm. 16. Whoa, there's no hell. That is true. Okay, go on. It is. <laughs> that is true. It is. There's a hell. It is true. Jesus said. 16. He that hears you hears me. Whoa! Underline that. And he that despises you despises me. Underline that. And he that despises me despises him that sent me. Underline that. 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. They returned with what? Joy. Because what did they do? They did the things that God has commanded them, and they saw the power that they had in the name of Jesus. Y'all got to remember, they did this without the Holy Spirit. Because it had not yet been glorified. It had not been given because Jesus had not been glorified. They did this because Jesus gave them authority to do it. And the 70, everybody say 70. 70. How many? 70. They returned with what? Joy. Now think why they had the joy. Read that verse. And the 70 returned with joy. And go ahead. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Notice he said devils. Mm -hmm. Not devil. 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 You ain't fighting just one devil. Yeah. Okay? Uh, Say eight. it again. All the devils. Amen. Because she's going to come on and teach her the word of God. Because the Bible says this. My faith, amen. Out the mouth of babies, amen. The children are getting it sometimes and the adults don't. All the devils. The, the Bible says your God is not against flesh and blood, amen? amen. But guess what? Power. Principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness in high places. You've got, for every level, there's a different devil. Right. For every level, there's a different devil. And some of y'all are still fighting the little punk devils. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have been already moved up and you ain't gone already. <laughs> the little punk devil is keeping to me. See, come here. Oh, God, you should talk about the devil. He's going to get you. Listen, I have God. He's going to be power over all the power of the enemy. Oh, and the Bible God. says, nothing by any means can hurt me. Because oh. Christ is in me. God, oh, I'm about to read one more scripture, y'all. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Jesus said he saw Satan fall. Like lightning from heaven. And we are still fighting an enemy that is defeated. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that something? Y'all should be saying, why are you messing with me? You already lost. Because the enemy tries to take the words of God that is in your mouth, twist them to make you speak against what's already true. Yeah. You're already blessed. You're already seated in heavenly places. But the enemy tell you you're not. You're already healed. But the devil said you're not. Mm. You're going to always deal with all these problems. Guess what? God said, I'll take all things from you. It's a belief, y'all. Y'all. <laughs> y'all. It's a belief. It's a belief. It's a receiving and implementing. But are you going to be the one when you stand before God when you had the opportunity to be successful or you had the opportunity to be blessed? Are you going to stand before the Holy God and say, I was almost persuaded? Finish this. 18. And he said to them, 
I felt Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Told you. Nineteen. Behold, I give to you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Underline that. Those are the levels. I give you power. Say, I have power. Lord, 
that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. We want to have it together, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. We want to have it. My sister, we want to have it. And why would I allow anything on this earth to take me from my promise? I need you. I need you to pray for me. I need some Joshua and Caleb in this battle to hold up my arms. I need some people that will refuse to quit. Amen. Because if you refuse to quit in this short time we're here, and you give up your eternal blessing for a temporary pleasure, you would have almost made it. And you realize you gave up eternal life for what? Mm. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hid these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. 22. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knows who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son. And he, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. 23. And he turned unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. 24. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up. Okay, stop right there. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all are blessed. I'm going to have to come back to part two because there's a lot more scriptures I didn't read because I went on a tangent earlier. I want to thank all of you for watching us today. We're getting ready to take communion. And I want you to prepare your hearts to receive communion. We're going to do this until they open this city back up, until they open our nation back up. We're praying for those who have lost loved ones on this time. I'm thanking God for not uh, uh, a time for this past, as I'm praying and believing God for a vaccine. Amen? I'm believing God for a vaccine. And I'm praying and thanking God for his protection of what he has already given us. For those who have not read this song, please, Spend some time in Psalms 91. But I want, while you're passing out the elements, I want those who are here to think about things that are going on in your life, what you are believing God for, if there's something attacking your body, please believe that this is the greatest medicine ever, right here. This bread and this wine that we're about to receive in the name of the Lord. And after that, Alex is going to pray. After we take communion, and he is going to dismiss us. I want to invite again everyone to come out. Please get your elements together and to know how much God loves you and that we love you. And that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen. Amen. Bring up Alex. Amen. Okay. Hey, Pastor. Amen. Okay, we all be there. Uh, if you're online, if you want to just go ahead and um, grab your bread and your your wine, your grape juice, uh, if you would like to take me in with us. So uh, earlier we sang this song. Uh, it was called "Take Me to the King." And man, as I was worshiping, I really just want to share this with you guys because I don't know if we really understand what that means, uh, being taken to the King especially here in America. And so I kind of want to just talk about this for a moment and tie that in with what God's done for us. And so if you would remember in Esther, right, there's a famous line that we all quote where she says, fine, basically I'll do it, and if I perish, I perish, right? Well, why does she say that? She says that because it's not right to go into the presence of the king unless you're summoned, even as the wife of the king, which Esther was. And, and the wife of the king had 
over 200 concubines, but they couldn't go into his presence unless you're summoned. And what happens if you enter the presence of a king? Yeah, exactly, you die. That, that's punishable by death. In fact, you'll see many times where someone enters the king's presence, what happens is they hope that he'll put his scepter towards them, which basically says, you're welcome in my presence. But we, we read earlier in Psalm 136 that our God is the king of kings. Right, and so let, let us not take this moment for granted that as we were worshiping, you know, I really just thought of myself at the, at the throne of God. Like, if you can imagine, just close your eyes just for a moment and imagine, don't focus on anything else, but just imagine that you are before the throne of God, the king of all the universe, the one who knows the number of hairs on your head the one who has ordained the stars and all the galaxies, and he is the one that spoke, and at his word, creation was formed. The one who we will all give an account to. Imagine that you're before him. And remember this, as you have your eyes closed, that in the Old Testament, only one person was allowed to go into the presence of God. And he had to be ceremonially clean. He had to go through many rituals in order to be in there in his presence. And what would happen if he wasn't right before God? He would die. So I want you guys to understand this. Pastor and I were talking before church today. He was telling me that the presence of God demands attention. So right now, let your attention not be on anything else except for on God Almighty. That you, right now, in your chair, at home in your living room, you are before the presence of the King. And he demands our attention. Now, how does this tie into what God has done for us? Because if you read in Hebrews, as you all open your eyes, God has made a way for you to be right. It says in, the, in Hebrews that you can enter into the throne room with boldness and confidence because of what Christ has done on your behalf. Right? So, so we're seeing the song, Take Me to the King, I'm Worshiping, because God has made a way that I can be cleansed and be made right. And man, I was, I was more wicked than anybody else, and I deserved eternal punishment. But Jesus grabbed me out of that, and he said, you've been made whole. So as we take this today, let us remember what Jesus has done for you. Let's take this bread, the bread that was broken, the body that was broken for you. Let's take it right now. Thank you, Lord. Let's take, oh, everyone hold up your cup and remember, man, I implore you, I implore you, don't let this moment pass you by, please. I mean, you guys hear me up here all the time, but I implore you to really take this seriously, like what God has done, that heaven is not just a place where you can play football all the time like I used to think it was, but it's a place where you are going to worship God Almighty. Amen. It's joy to worship him now. Let's take the drink. Now I'm going to pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for everything Lord, that you've done and that you're doing. God, would you help us to see more of who you are? Help us in our hearts to just meditate on you, to fall more in love with you, God. You demand and deserve all of our attention. And God, whatever it is that has our attention, whatever it is that we are focused on that isn't you, God, would you help us to refocus, to renew our minds. Jesus, we just thank you for what you've done, the price that you paid, that we could be made whole, that we could be made new. Jesus, we just worship you right now, God, and we ask that you would continue to do what you've always done. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And before Amen. I create, I want to invite you, if you have never accepted the Lord Jesus, wherever you're at, whether you're in this church, whether you are in your living room or at your kitchen table, if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus, today is your day. Today is that opportunity. Don't wait. And you have no idea when you'll stand before God. When eternity is at your door, you can leave tonight and in, in the blink of an eye, you're standing before God. 
And what will you say? What will you give as an account for your life? Will you show all the good works you've done? Or will you say, I trust in the blood of Jesus. And he's the reason I stand blameless because he's the only way. He's the only truth and the only life. So I encourage you right now, if you've never made him your Lord and Savior, the Bible says, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, then I will be saved. That's in Romans 10, verse, verse 9. And so right now, we're going to pray one more time, and I love prayer. And I'm going to pray over you. If you just repeat this with me, there's no magic words. There's no formula. Just open your heart and invite him in, because he wants you. That's why he died. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, God, and I recognize my need for you, that without you I'm empty, without you I'm chasing after everything that I don't need, God, but right now, Lord Jesus, I cast all those things away and I ask you, God, would you come into my heart? Would you come into my life and change me? Would you make me new? Would you make me look like you, God? Would you help me, Lord Jesus, to understand more of who you are, that I may share your word with others who need you just as much as I do. And Lord, today I give my life to you, Lord, understanding that all of my sins are covered under your blood, washed away, redeemed, forgiven, and set free, that sin has no bondage on me, but that I can stand clean and forgiven in your sight because of what you've done on the cross for me. Jesus, I thank you now in your precious and mighty name. I pray. Amen. Hey, guys, we love you so much. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any prayer requests, please. Message us on Facebook, email us. We love to pray with you. We'll see you guys next week. Okay. We're going to create this. Okay. Everybody stand up. Yeah, let's stand up. Thank you, Jesus. God is standing. That's right. Okay. Put your hands on your heart and say it like you mean it. That's right. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditations of my heart always be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. I am the head and not the tail. I am the blessing.